just a quick announcement before we do start. I put sign up sheets for the tutorials and workshops at the back. They will disappear at lunchtime. So sign up for those that you feel interested in. And once we know what interest there is for each one, then we'll decide exactly when the tutorials and workshops for each will take place. Um, it's very great the opportunity to talk here at the school and I appreciate very much the work that the organizers have done in, in putting this up here. It's a lot of work. So I was invited to uh, talk about modern approach to programming. And um, I was turning this over in my mind for months, not really knowing, not really sure what I should be talking about. Um, I'm still not so sure. In the end, I decided I'll try to use this slot here to um, build bridges. Explanations of what private is, what public protecting of private is. These are just policing tools. They don't really add any concepts. It's just um, details. And please don't get sidetracked by stuff like this. It's not important at all. It's, um, it can be helpful to make use of these features, but they're not central to the ideas of object oriented programming. Um, oops, what have I done? Of those things, even though they're just numbers, they can just be floating points. Then suddenly you have to use a function to convert between. Now that's a very extreme case. Normally, things which are just numbers, as Ralph said, you wouldn't bother to make a class of. But there can be cases in which making absolutely everything a class is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with that, but now I have an answer to it. Going to give us a lecture based on the time I came up with originally using available tools to see which tools Louis wants to use. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, can I thank the organisers, Tom especially, for inviting me to extend my vacation uh, in France, uh, over to Siena here. Um, I wrote my talk uh, before I went away, and of course uh, it's, been, it's been essentially fixed, and so the left. So, hello. Uh, I'm the kind of keeper of the Crystals program in Oxford, um, which means I have very little to do with the authorship of it. That was mostly done by cleverer people than me. Um, I've just been lucky in being able to, to work with other people. Um, I was invited by the organisers to talk about uh, legacy code. And I said to Harry, why have you got me to talk about legacy code? And he says, well, because you're still writing it. Um, <laughs> and they're fiddling away, um, happy to use aging code because it does the tasks they need. And they hope that sometime in the future uh, the fairies will come and turn it all into something more modern. Uh, Houston, where it's just a little bit hotter than it is here, and so you see me in my work clothes. Um, I, I saw the schedule rather late, and I put this talk together based on. The, what I had done, I'm sorry, I can't see you. The, what I had done at Ragaku MSC in the last 10 years. And so it follows naturally from what uh, Rolf Grosser Kunstleber had talked about. And we'll get right into it here. Uh, an outline for my talk would be I'll talk about some previous software packages that I worked on, a current software package that I'm working on. Uh, the when and why is summarized here. Okay, uh, I'm going to take you somewhat back to the basics, really. Uh, you need to know... It would be an excellent way for somebody starting to write crystallographic software, um, but nevertheless, we have an enormous amount of Fortran code, and not all of it is bad, and uh, <coughs> um, it still actually has some advantages. Um, one of the advantages is that it's extremely portable, Fortran is a very well-established language, so you can take the same code, it compiles on any um, computer, and it will probably still compile in 30 years' time. 
I mean, as an example, um, Shellac 76 was actually written in the early 1970s, before Fortran 77 came out. <coughs> actually compiles and runs on any modern computer without changing a single statement. Your faces in TCLTK. I have not prepared anything, but if there's some interest, um, we'll try to spend some time. I'll put together some examples and we can work through a little bit of it. So it would be interesting to show hands of people who are interested in some hands-on programming with TCLTK. Okay, I see. All right. Um, how about, can we have the um, other workshop room from uh, 5.45 till the bus leaves? You're supposed to intuitively understand it. Um, one concept that's very important in a graphical user interface is an analogy to things that we know fit. Use again, and uh, much less uh, treat any of the crystallography behind it, although the examples will be crystallography. Well, this, this is a very old machine, and in the days that this old machine was in, were delivered, um, the instruments were made by what is called instrument manufacturers. I worked and, on that machine, that's a CAD 3. Yeah. <laughs> or an AD 3, I don't know actually. You can't tell from this image whether it's an AD 3 or CAD 3. Um, the, in those days, the instrument was delivered with maybe a little bit of software. The field will be in the future, but if you just write your software such that it can handle the widest possible of advances in the future, then you write your software in a future-proof way. I'd like to have a look at some data. Now what is that? Is this data? PDF being Atomic Pair Distribution Function Analysis. So I have some goals for the talk, like I said, first is what, when, why, how of PDF. The second is to talk a little bit about software projects. This is a software meeting uh, and software engineering. This is in the context of a dance project. I'll tell you what that is later, but it's something that I'm involved in. And at the end, I hope to make some provocative remarks. So PDF, why? Okay, well, um, most of us here are crystallographers, that means that we have crystals and we study them to get the uh, uh, This is, and, and why there's still half the audience not here actually, because they're out probably enjoying the sunshine and this, and this wonderful place. And just to thank the organisers for the opportunity uh, to, uh, to come here uh, and to, uh, to speak. I must say I have anguished about this, because although Tom uh, did say in an email to the uh, various uh, speakers that the distribution uh, of attendees uh, in terms of the series of Question. We went to, oh, yes, I've got a question for you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah, it doesn't do that. They were so, 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 so